This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtas, current and future configurations. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's currently the 8th of November 2021, version 2.2 Bravo of the community A29 Super Tucano mod came out. With it has come several new added features, several changes to old features and some bug fixes. Let's start with the stuff that's been added. First, we now have radio functions. Let's start here in the mission editor. We have a Tucano there. If I go to radio presets there, two primary radios, COM1 and COM2. It says that both are VHF, UHF, but this one here appears to be UHF only, at least in the presets, whereas this one appears to be VHF, UHF. If you want to change one of the presets in either of the radios, just come here and just change it to whatever megahertz you want and AM or FM. The guy we're going to be talking to is Sanaki Tower. If I click on Sanaki Tower, you can see he has those different freaks. I'm going to use the VHF 132 megahertz. Let's go and show you how to do it. Up on the UFC, we now have our main screen here, which shows the current freaks in COM1 and COM2. We can then access COM1 and COM2, just like an F16. Let's start with COM1. We use the dobber up and down to select the item, then dob a right to change the item, transmit receive, transmit receive plus guard and off. And we have a manual frequency that we can set. Let's set that to 132 because we do actually want to use it. One, three, two, zero, 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 and another zero to, whoops, and another zero to select it. You'll have to go back into it after that. You know that you've selected it because uh, the square little green boxes are now by manual down we can change our preset with the incrementer but I haven't actually set anything up so we're just going to leave that uh, we can have uh, two manual frequencies set and we can switch between them so this will be the next that we can set and we can change that as required power I doubt it actually does anything but you can change the power there modulation amplitude frequency there going to be using AM most of the time Squelch, I can't figure out how to turn it on and off. It was always on, so I'm guessing you just can't turn it off. And that's that. Um, you can do the same for COM2. Let's show you using it. So we've currently got manual selected and 132.000 megahertz and we're and AM. How do we actually use it? Again, assuming that um, Easy Communications is off. If Easy Communications is turned on, you none of this will work and you don't need to do this anyway. But let's assume it's off, which it is. Then we're going to press here com forward aft and up so this one's for com one this one's for com two this one's for com three the high frequency radio which i'm not sure is working at the moment so i'm going to press com one ping and i'm going to request taxi to runway and if i've got everything Copy. set it should Enter work field. one one request taxi to runway oh. yay beautiful go try it yourself with those parameters that i've said and it will work Next, we now have CCIP delayed mode, which is pretty awesome. Let's uh, get everything set up as usual. So, on the aircraft, check air to ground mode, check weapon select SMS, choose the weapon. I'm going to go Mark 82 Snake Eyes, nose tail, otherwise good to go. Automatically, our CCIP symbology appears in the HUD, as you can see. Let's go find a target, uh, that lovely big building sitting right there. So, Flight path marker, bomb fall line, CCIP reticle or pipper. Just put that guy there on the thing you want to blow up. Then press and hold that there and never let go of this. At that point, we'll get extra symbology and we'll talk through that. Hopefully, I'll be able to pause it and show you at the same time. So, let's put this on the target. It's nice and straight and level. There's a massive crosswind from right to left for some reason, but we'll ignore that. Let's go. Push and hold. Okay. Now, we've got our ASL Azima steering line. From top to bottom while i'm pushing them holding you want to fly so that the flight path marker here or velocity vector is on that line as close as possible we can see a number down here that is our tmr or time to release so on current parameters in 19 seconds the bombs will fall that will also be replicated by this timing cue here which will drop down the asl once it reaches the flight path marker the bombs will drop that point that guy there will change from time to drop to time till impact so let's watch all that happen in real time again hopefully the pause won't mess it up but let's try it so flying with the flight path marker on the asl time to release is uh, ticking down it may not be that accurate because there's a massive wind and these are actually retarded bombs but let's see what happens it's dropping down now look at the timer on the right and the 
and the timing cue fall. Stop. Now, the symbology's gone because the bomb's gone, obviously. We're now six seconds to impact, and that's our time till impact. And we can follow the bomb. We should land square right in the middle of our, uh, our thingy. That we're blowing up. Pretty accurate, as you can see. And kaboomy! Boom. Oh, cut away. That shows the CCIP delayed mode. CCIP for cluster bomb and high drag bomb calculations are done, so they're accurate, and I've just showed that to you using a snake eye in high drag mode, that it's uh, accurate to within a few feet. Next, let's go back and look at some CMFD menus. Next, queue check and interactive OSSs to CMFD DTE. Well, that's a lot of acronyms. What does that mean? It means we've got an extra page in our, what I'm going to call MFDs, just to keep it very simple. So, Back to main menu, just click the OSB that's already highlighted. The one we're interested in is this, DTE. This is essentially our data cartridge. What would happen is the ground crews will come in and put a data cartridge into the aircraft, and then we need to suck certain pieces of information from that data cartridge into the system. That's what this is all about. So here's our page where we do it. What things do we want to load from the data cartridge into the system? Well, here they are. MP, well, I'll just click them. That, that 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 and that they're all simulated it's loading them from the cartridge now let's clear that we see the mission we're on is caucus that's the pilot no co-pilot and that's the id of our particular data cartridge now the data cartridge is not simulated per se at the moment we believe it's going to basically take in information from the mission editor by doing this radio frequencies and and whatever else if we want to check information that's come in, a queue check, I'm guessing that means quick check. We're going to look here and you can see various factors that have come through uh, from the data cartridge. If we want to load all of them, then we can load all of them. And that's pretty much it for this menu. Back to main menu. Next, dummy FLIR page. Uh, there is no FLIR because this is a mod and mods can't really have FLIRs as far as I'm aware at least. So we just have dum a dummy page added, FLIR, and it is just... Uh, degraded or not available because it's degraded and not available next dvr digital video recorder ping as far as i'm aware not modeled at the moment video recorders are just not modeled in dts at the moment but it's nice that we've got a little page here time remaining i've got that many minutes of digital video recording uh, left and that many minutes have been done what would i like it to record the hud the uh, uh left mfd the right mfd the blur and so on but obviously it's not actually simulated Next, checklist. It's not populated yet, but we have a blank uh, framework for the checklist. So checklists. What do you want? Checklists. Here are all your checklists, obviously, color-coded. And you would click in here, and it would obviously have the checklist 1 to 16. Currently not populated. Back to the main menu. Next screen is UFCP. What this does is give you a copy of the UFC up here. The only reason I can think of is because maybe if this was broken, or a button was broken or something like that, you can now access it. Uh, from one of these digital screens here it's just the same basically except it's a different way of clicking the buttons next uh, we've got a fuel page added to the ufc so we're going to go dobber right we're going to go fuel which is e enter enter and we can change our bingo and we can change our joker there next alarm test doesn't really work for us but let us know what you think alarm test is down here we can go alarm test panel or we can go alarm test fire. Now all it does for us is panel is it just gets this light to go on here. Should it do other things? I would expect so, but that's all we get. So let us know what you think. Finally, for the things added, we've had a time to impact added and we showed you that with the delayed CCIP bombing. Next, the list of changes. I'm gonna show them up here, various changes to add accuracy and whatnot and other changes of slight changes of format and whatnot. And here you can see some fixes. That's a quick summary to version 2.2 Bravo A29 Super Decano, early November 2021. I hope that was useful to see you later.